Hello again, I am Jim Bob. Welcome back to Big Bud Farm. And uh, while you've been away, I have done an awful lot of work on this farm. And you can see in the top right corner, we have $932,000. And uh, we are also completely debt free again. So in total, we have around $1.25 million if we factor in the $300,000 available as a loan with the money that we have in our account. We also have some new additions to the farm as well. So obviously, first off, you can see we have a pickup truck. So I've done a little bit of reorganizing in here. I've moved our fuel trailer in here in this little storage area. I've also bought in one of these uh, toolbox mods so that we can uh, use our pickup truck as a mobile workshop. We can stick the toolbox in the back of here, go around to wherever we need to on the farm and customize any piece of equipment that we own. In here, <clears throat> this is the new location for our Voltra. Uh, I've uprated the engine and fitted wide tires on it because it's been busy working at the biogas plant. Uh, we're keeping the uh, tether in here as well at the moment. And this is mainly just simply for lack of unsure where, you know, not entirely sure where to put them just yet. Uh, nothing else has changed around here. We still have the same equipment as before. So we have our mower, baling setup our fertilizer and our auger wagon. Uh, we still have the two 450s. Uh, one of them is actually out on the field, ready to go. And uh, we have a 747. Finally, Big Bud Farm gets the biggest of Big Buds. It's been a long time coming, but uh, as we get uh, closer and closer to uh, owning field one, and with our silage operation in need of a little bit of extra grunt for when it came to compacting, the time came to actually buy a 747. And that now lives in that separate shed on the edge there. Uh, these are the storage areas for our uh, forage harvester and trailer. So the Chrome Big X 580 lives in here with a header on a trailer just next to it. And then in here, the Penta trailer will live in there. They obviously also both out on a field, ready to go. So, speaking of being out on the field, let's take a look at the current situation. So, field three, field five, they both have grass, as does our little area up here that we worked on. Now, if we go to growth, you can see this area has been mown mode and uh, has subsequently regrown and it's ready to go field three has been mowed and is starting to grow back in and field five is ready to go if we look at our soil composition you can see if i turn off uh, there we go turn off fertilizing field three no longer needs plowing and that is simply because we mowed field three we mowed all that grass that we planted and that removed the need to plow the field and it's also applied stage one fertilization as well so if we take the plowing off the display you can see field five that grass is fully grown it's fully fertilized it's ready to go ready to be cut and processed and uh, currently the actual main bulk of field five not including these little extensions that we added on uh, a few episodes ago, these little uh, cuts into the headland that we made. This part of the field is now in need of ploughing. It's had three harvests done on it. That soil is ready to be turned over. By mowing it, we are eliminating the need to do that, as you can see with field three. So we will cut this. We'll transport all that grass up into the BGA. And field five will end up like field three, completely clean, ready to go in terms of ploughing and we'll have stage one of fertilizer applied to it as well we'll need to seed over the grass now we can either just cultivate to clean the field off back to just dirt itself or you know, and then plant whatever we want or we can use our terminator which obviously cultivates and fertilizes and seeds at the same time and just drive that over the grass field and it will just replace that grass with whatever we choose to put down that it can carry. So we're gonna do a soybean uh, run as our next crop. If we take a look at our finances, 
we actually have a decent price not a stellar price but a decent price at small farm for our canola it's not really quite good enough just yet so we're going to hang on to that uh, sunflower prices are pretty poor uh, and they're the only two crops that we have so uh, not a lot we can really do there just yet uh, in terms of loan there you can see loan of zero we have absolutely no debt whatsoever and if I come down here you can see just how hard I've been working recently to earn extra money for our farm and obviously Big Bud 747 just over there that cost us 400,000 uh, the truck was another 50 something thousand some of the other bits and bobs that we've purchased have been a bit more expensive as well so we've earned a lot of money we've also spent a lot of money at the same time and yet here we are effectively halfway through the total that we need to get field one field one fully discounted now costs us just a little over 2.4 million and we have about 1.2 million so we're halfway there more work still needs to be done uh, this is another uh, addition we now have a helianthus combine header uh, for our sunflowers mounted on a trailer uh, and we can use this purely just on sunflowers but it's also very helpful for earning large large amounts of money on contract work most of that contract work that I've been doing has been on field 4 simply because it's such a big big field so you can see uh, it's clean at the moment it's just been harvested I've just finished a sunflower harvest on this field and my payout was four hundred thousand dollars for the harvest and two hundred and twenty something thousand for the time bonus because it offered me a 12 row nine meter New Holland corn header uh, I accepted the job on those requirements and then used my helianthus header which is uh, a 16 row 12 meter header and also allows me to harvest at nine miles an hour instead of six so that's why I got such a big time bonus on top of the 400,000 so a really nice big injection of cash there as you can see our forestry area is really starting to come in very nicely as well all of our trees are starting to really really look quite nice and uh, money making I'm not sure if there'll be one more stage of growth I think this is probably them at their best but we're gonna hang on for a, a few in-game days longer just to see if they do go any taller I think this is now for all intents and purposes ready to go so we will be really looking at getting into our logging at some point in the very near future as well so here we are then on field five chewing up the grass here with our forage header or forage harvester that big X is uh, mowing away quite nicely throwing all that grass into our penta and then we'll be transporting and shuttling that up to our biogas plant now, as I said I have been busy uh, not just with contract work but also shuttling all this grass up and working it in the BGA as well we currently have 1.25 million litres of uh, chaff in the bunker kind of squashed up it's uh, got a, some, a 90 something percent compaction rate at the moment which is pretty uh, pretty nice it's going to help speed things up a little bit when we are ready to uh, actually do it and uh, once this field has been done we will be blanketing whatever we've got and uh, fermenting it so once this is done then uh, we are ready to go and start making our big batch of silage. Here we are at the BGA. You can see all that chaff been uh, pushed in there and uh, compacted. Now it's time to add in yet another trailer's worth of grass. So, as I said, been very, very busy. Uh, over the last few days on this map. This is why there was no Fent Farm uh, on Friday. Uh, apologies if you were looking forward to that episode. I got uh, stuck on a contracting job and just didn't have time to work on recording an episode of Fent Farm as well. And this is also why this episode is also coming out 
today on Sunday and not yesterday when it was supposed to. Uh, simply because, as I said, I've been incredibly busy on contract work trying to uh, get some real progress on this farm before it starts to stagnate. There's only so many times we can go up and down fields three and five before it becomes too repetitive. So the quicker we can add in field one, the better. And just to give you an idea of exactly how long it took me to uh, do some of these contract jobs, obviously, as you know, doing a standard grain harvest with a 45 foot draper on, the, on field four takes around seven and a quarter hours or so maybe seven and a half, depending on whether or not you run out of fuel or not. <laughs> um, to do the sunflower harvest with the Helianthus header, it took me six hours and 17 minutes. Uh, in between those two harvests, I also did a fertilizing run, which took me a couple of hours. And on top of that, I also plowed that field. Yes, I took on a plow job on field four where you can't change the tractor and uh, because you can't change it in any way the best you're going to get in terms of a sort of engine size is if you get the Magnum which will give you a speed oh, I'm sorry, a horsepower engine size of around about 419 horsepower I think it is as the standard sized engine in a Magnum you can't upgrade that you can't improve the power of the engine can't change the wheel setup you can't do anything to that tractor apart from get in it and drive it so while I could have swapped out the plow and used the Gregoire Bessel 10 meter plow or 10 and a half meter plow it would have taken me an eternity because the Big Bud 450 as you know is a wonderful wonderful little tractor so versatile really powerful 500 horsepower the plow needs 550 to pull at speeds of you know its proper speed of nine miles an hour so our 450 can pull it and it will have it it'll plow the field at around seven miles an hour and that's only dropping 50 horsepower so you can imagine dropping nearly 150 horsepower you can imagine just what that's going to do to how fast you can harvest or plow the field as i should say using a 10 and a half meter plow you're going to gain a lot more in working width but it's going to take you so long to get up the field on each pass that that extra width is going to be a complete waste and you're actually going to be slower than using the standard large plow that's available to you which is the Salford 6.2 meter plow so I had to do that field in its entirety with a 6.2 meter plow it took me over 12 and a half hours of just going up and down and up and down with the plow. Oh, so tedious. <laughs> so, so soul destroying that, uh, that contract work. But I got a nice payout from it. I got a good you know, income from the job itself. Didn't get a fantastic time bonus because, well, for a lot of that you know, mission, it was pitch black and I couldn't see very clearly. So I wasn't as efficient as I probably could have been. But even so, it took an awful long time to do that job. And uh, I will not be doing a plow job manually on that field again. Uh, if I, you know, if, you know, I need some money and the plow job is available, I will just wait till that goes and do cultivating or fertilizing or seeding, anything, anything other than plowing. 12 and a half hours of my life gone. And uh, I would kind of like that back. <laughs> I really would. It was uh, it was horrible. Even you know with Netflix to keep me company, you know there's only so much you can watch before you know uh, you need a break from that. And yeah, that was a very long job, and I'm in no no hurry to repeat that. So we'll stick to harvesting. We'll stick to fertilising. We'll stick to cultivating and seeding. We will not do another plough job on that field. Speaking of plows, uh, I forgot to mention as well that I have now also sold the two Salford plows that we had on the farm. There was just simply no need to them anymore. 
now that we're doing the uh, I suppose I could call it the grass trick to uh, reset our plough state on fields three and five we don't need to plough them so there's no point having a plough for those two fields uh, likewise when we get to field one we won't be using the six metre plough we'll be using big bud and the ten and a half metre plough so we still need to buy that ten and a half metre plough but we don't need it just yet so rather than incur an unnecessary cost at this stage for something that won't be used for quite some time we'll wait on that one a little bit before we actually buy it So just how much more money do we actually need? Well, our target for the field was 2.4 million, but our actual target is actually closer to 3.5 million to get everything that we need to really expand our farm properly. So the field itself, that's 2.4 million. We're halfway to that. That's great. We can get that and we can be done just at that point. And we can say we have enough equipment we're good to go but there is additional equipment that I would really like us to have in place pretty quickly after buying that field and that's where the extra 1.1 1.2 million will come in so obviously we're going to need a plow so that's another hundred and something straight off the bat we're going to need a second combine so assuming that we buy just a CR 1090 and a draper uh, we don't bother with buying a corn header, we don't buy a second sunflower header, we just buy the draper and the combine. That's another $500,000 right there. Then we're going to need something to be able to unload into. So that could be an extra truck plus trailers plus dolly. Or we could go for what I want to go for, which is the Bromar mother bins. So we could have one at each end of the field. And then we can run both combines side by side up one side of the field with an auger sort of chasing alongside them. When we get to the top, that auger can dump into the, into the mother bin. And then we can reposition the combines on the opposite side of the field going back down. Chase them again with that auger. And when we get to the bottom, unload the auger into the second mother bin. So now we're talking an additional 250000 for the mother bins. Then we're going to need a second seed rig. It's going to take a long time for just a single seeder to work field one. That's a 30 meter, uh, sorry, 30 hectare field. That's huge. It's way bigger than what we have right now. You know, even stacking fields three and five together isn't even close to field one. So a single Terminator CD unit just won't cut it. We're going to need a second one of those. That's another $310,000. So even though we are halfway to owning the field, we're still a long way from being able to finance all that additional equipment we'll need to really efficiently work that field. So there will still be a little bit more contract work that will need, need to be done. But this is why we have our forestry area. You know, those trees will hopefully bring in enough money to fund some of that additional purchasing that we need to do. We have our big mound of silage that we're working on right now. That will bring in several hundred thousand. That alone will pay for the combine and hopefully, hopefully will cover a little bit more as well. But that should easily cover the cost of the combine, I think. You know, once it's... Uh, ready to go and then we have our grains as well if we get lucky and get a nice big great demand on one of those crops that we own we will be absolutely laughing all the way to the bank well, at least i will because it means i won't have to do 12 hour 12 hour contract jobs to uh, earn a nice big chunk of change so although we're halfway there to the cost of the field you know, we're only a third of the way there to the money that we need for everything. So still plenty of work left to be done. And uh, hopefully we're going to get lucky with a great demand pretty soon. I've had a couple that have popped up while you've been away and they've always been for something that I don't have. 
be it for wheat or for sugar beets or you know wood chips again having got rid of all of our wood chips earlier you know they've all been great demands that we haven't been able to take advantage of so I'm hoping that we'll get one that we will be able to take advantage of you know, obviously we have a nice big stockpile of sunflowers and a nice big stockpile of canola once we finish this field and we start planting we'll end up with a nice big stockpile of soybean as well so we'll have three strong high value crops just sitting and waiting for that great demand and then we have our sheep as well so as you can see we have five complete pallets here and one pallet that is uh, nearly halfway through so we're gaining quite a nice bit of wool already we're actually going to have to top up our animals pretty soon uh, they're running out on feed and they're running out on water so we'll have to top those up give them a little bit of a head start we have bred a few extra animals as you can see so we're up to 107 sheep now um, but you know our grass feed is really low and our water isn't that much better so at some point later this episode we'll get those guys topped up and keep them in uh, tip top shape well, that's it that's the last of the grass the field is done but we have nine nine liters let's uh, try and dump that in there It's not going to come out, is it? Why is that doing that? For some reason, every now and again, the game seems to do this. It just kind of glitches a little bit. So you've got a little bit of grass that just refuses to behave like grass. I don't know why. But it doesn't let you tip it in with the rest of the grass that's being converted into chaff. You know, you try and add it to a food mix and it doesn't necessarily get picked up by the food mixer. I'm going to try and drop this up with our sheep and see if it'll go in the sheep food pen. We need to uh, deal with our sheep while we're up here anyway. We need to top their water up, so we'll use the big bud to do that. And uh, we'll also give them some more food bales as well, get them back up to, uh, to pretty close to being full levels. But all of our field work is now done in terms of uh, mowing up with the forage harvester so we can clean that up put that away uh, clean these two pieces of equipment up put them away and it's time to start looking at seeding our fields there we go let's uh, drop this just here There we go. That actually went in. That's good. So let's drop the trailer there. Let's uh, just connect up to this. That should be all we need to do, hopefully. We won't run out of water, but if we do, we can always just go and do a quick refill. There we go. Water is full. Get back up with the penta. There we go. did I leave the claw because these are my pallet forks just here you'll notice I had to uh, slow time down uh, we were just eating up time so quickly that by the time I'd finished just mowing field 5 it would have been the end of the day so I had to slow time down now oh, there's a claw So let's go with a single stack. That should be all we need. Let's just clamp those. They're very much more unstable using the JCB uh, wheel loader, or telehandler, I've noticed. Because the claw doesn't tilt back anywhere near as far as it would on one of the other low loaders or telehandlers. There we go. Four bales. That should be all we need. We, I don't think we can even put an extra bale in there yet. 
let's just drop the claw. There we go. Let's check our animal page. Yeah, look at that. Full on water, almost full on hay and grass. Beautiful. Right. There we go. Field five, look. Fully fertilized, ready to go. And apart from a couple of tiny little red dots, which I can't seem to get rid of for some reason, I'm not entirely sure why, uh, this field is plowed, even though it hasn't actually been plowed. So uh, there we go. Uh, we can now start seeding on that. Let's first of all put this away. So got our little trailer header here, or header trailer. Yeah. That little red line is uh, a great way for us to actually line up where the header goes. We can see the arrow makes it really great for guiding in. And when we get to that point there, we drop the trailer. Or we drop the header onto the trailer, and there we go. Really efficient little way. <laughs> I love that, it's such a great little feature, a really efficient way of actually knowing exactly where to drop your header. Okay, there we go, that's the big X put away, so now it is time for the big guy. Time for the uh, 747. Bring him out to the open. Even with single wheels this thing is still huge and imposing. Barely clears that pipe there. <laughs> I mean, look how big this thing is. Even with singles, it still looks just meaty and mighty and impressive. So it's time to give our 450s a little bit of a rest. Yeah, they've each put in a lot of hours already. We're going to use our brand new Big Bud to seed the fields. We are fully loaded. Time to go and do some planting. Oh, such an imposing machine. I'm so glad that we finally have one of these on the farm. I've been waiting for the right time to introduce one there just wasn't really a huge need for one earlier on and even to an extent we don't really need one right now but it was so helpful keeping that silage under control or that chaff under control while we were filling it up ready for silage and you know we are so close to being able to get the next field up and running that it kind of just made sense to you know say now is the right time to get the 747 get everything squared up that should be good so if we've done this absolutely spot on and I think we have this will eat up all of that grass that's currently on the field. Where are we? Zoomed in on the wrong part of the map. There we go. So yeah, we don't have that thin blue line down the edge look to suggest that we are missing the, the edge of the field. There we go. And if we move across here, we can see obviously this is grass it's supposedly ready to harvest, apart from these bits where I've streaked across the field with tractors. And you can see the new crop going on there. Planting our soybeans. So let's turn the grass filter off again now. There we go. Now we can see a lot clearly, a lot, a lot uh, more cleanly, exactly what it is we're trying to plant.
So with our Big Bud 747 happily chewing up the grass there with our Terminator Cedar, it's time to just take a final stock of where we stand with our silage production. So we're in the Vultra. We're going to grab our little silage fork. Well, I say silage fork. We're going to use our silage leveler just here. There we go. Lift that up out of the way. And let's see exactly where we stand on this. Uh, no, that's not what I want. That's what I want. The help window. Uh, 1.6 million litres of chaff. 1,615,000 uh, 615, litres of chaff. 78% compaction level. It's pretty impressive we can do better than that in terms of compaction so one of the things that we can do is obviously uh, keep pushing up here try and fill in some of these gaps that have sprung up And then when we've done that, we can just drive up and down the top of it. And we probably use Big Bud for that as well, <laughs> if we can get it up this uh, embankment, which shouldn't be too much of an issue. A little bit that's kind of spilled out the back there. Not a lot I can do about that, unfortunately. But I can make sure that this is all nice and condensed. far off being as good as we're going to get in terms of pushed up so I think I think that's pretty as much as good as it's going to get so now we just need to uh, kind of finish compacting that down happily just sort of chewing up all this uh, grass here <laughs> you can see we've already done quite a large chunk of the field I'd say we've probably done about half the field already just uh, the rest of it there to do shouldn't take too long and then when this is done obviously we'll uh, head on over to field three uh, to field five we'll do the same on field five chew up all that grass cover it uh, with a nice soybean crop and then we'll get our silage compacted and then we'll see where we are from there. In the last episode we talked about the contrast between the look of the field that had just been freshly seeded with grass against the look of the stubble that was left over from the previous harvest. How's that for a contrast? That sort of lightish coloured tufts of grass over that sort of uh, mottled green underlay there which becomes less and less visible as you tighten the angle down and look at the, uh, the stark difference with that freshly churned, freshly seeded soil right next to it that's a real stark contrasting difference as you can see there alright, moving on to field 5 this thing unfold as we spin and pivot around that looks pretty good to me and now I've just made a huge mess of that backed it up wrong way and again that's what I wanted to do push it round on that side 
go. Fantastic. So our soybean crop is coming along really nicely. Uh, great demand for wool. Ah, oh, beautiful. 18 hours. Ooh, okay. Let's check our wool st status. Closing in on another pallet. Now, question is... 18 hours, that puts us... Midnight day tomorrow. Is that right? Midday? 18 hours? Nine hours from now will be 3 a.m. So, no. Two hours. It'll be 2 p.m. tomorrow. No. That's 22 hours. It takes six hours off. So it'll be, yeah, midday tomorrow. I was right the first time. Midday tomorrow is basically when we run out on that option. So the question is... Oh, my brain hurts. Uh, will this <laughs> will this pallet that we have right now, will that finish and generate another full pallet in time before the end of the Great Demand? I don't think it will, but we will be able to get six pallets out of what we have so far. So, uh, let's jump up to the farm. And let's try and be a little bit clever with our pallets over here. Great demand for wool. It's come earlier than I was hoping it would. I thought we'd be able to generate more than we've got already. But let's face it, we're not going to turn down a great demand on wool even if we're not quite where we were hoping it was going to be in terms of production level. So what I want to do is just push a little bit just enough to square them up with the ones behind them like that there we go so now we should in theory be able to just drive up and scoop both of those pallets up with these forks I've never used these forks before so I honestly don't know how well this is going to go and straight away I can see it's going to be an issue so let's try it a different way we push these back to there like that. Let's try attacking them from the other side. Now, can we line them up this way? And again, I think the answer is going to be no. <laughs> uh, and again, yes, the answer is no. So this tool uh, can't be used the way I wanted to use it. So it's effectively useless. Ah, right. Let's see what we can use instead. So, uh, wheel loaders, let's go to tools. See, I'm curious about this, a pallet fork with a grabber. Uh, could be useful. There's nothing else really over this way. So it looks as though we either go with a traditional pallet fork or we try the pallet fork with grabber. I want to try this. I really do. So let's grab that. Now we want it for the wheel loader. So let's buy that. And uh, let's go get it. Yeah, that forestry area is definitely starting to look really, really inviting. Gonna have some fun working in there in the not too distant future. Okay, there we go. Sold the uh, tool that was 
effectively useless for it. It's obviously designed for seed pallets, and as we don't need any of those, it's kind of useless. So let's see what we've got around here, and why is it... configured like that? Doesn't look anything like it that way. That looks very odd. Oh wait, I've got a wheel loader version. I don't want a wheel loader version. Hmm. Alright, there's a way around this. Uh, once again, the AI is being a bit of a pain in the ass on this particular field here. But for some reason, because we started on the uh, far end, it's actually doing it on the opposite side of the field. I've never seen it done it on this side before. There. I just checked over to see if he, how he was doing and, uh, yeah, just not working properly at all. I'm not entirely sure why he's, he's now transferred the issue from one side of the field to the other. But uh, there we go. So, uh, we need this. We need our pickup truck. And uh, to go in the pickup truck, we also need our toolbox. Oh, we're getting a little bit of lag there. So yeah, there we go, that's in. So I'm going to whiz this over to the store. Because rather than having to force sell something at 50% because we can't connect up to it, I'm just going to modify it for free using our toolbox. All right. So, grab our toolbox. Oops. Let's just throw it all over the place, why don't we? Uh, don't want to customize the pickup truck. Getting some really weird lag spikes on this game today. Let's move the pickup truck out of the way. And turn the engine off as well. There we go. Pallet fork. There we go. So. Uh, we need this for a telehandler. There we go. Fantastic job. So now we should be able to connect up to it, although I'm still confused as to why it's looking that way. It does look a little bit weird. Let's uh, drop that in the back. Close the tailgate up. There we go. So let's see if we can figure out why this looks the way it looks. So it does look as though it's in two pieces. And I'm not entirely sure. why that is or how we connect those two pieces together is it let's pull up the help menu on this one so, uh, close cover. Oh, wait, there we go. Oh, I see. That's just somewhere to store the cover so we can actually use it with that. That makes more sense now. Now I understand why we even get supplied with that thing in the first place. Alright, so... Let's take this back up to our sheep farm. Alright, so we're back here at the farm. I need to figure out exactly where to put this. So, this seems like a, as good a place as any. So, we'll drop that down just there. So, we have our cover, which we can obviously remove, and it goes back to there. Now, I'm guessing... Ha, <laughs> 
Yeah, look at that. That's that's better, that makes more sense. And the controls figured out. So let's try skewering up a pallet. goes on quite nicely. That's it. What we could also actually try and do, if I drop that just there, let me grab another one of these pallets. Again, I'm not used to using this telehandler. I'm so used to using the other ones again. And it's been so long since I've used it. I don't think I've actually used this really on 17. I think I've only really, last time I really used it properly was on 15. Let me see if I can use with these pushed together. It's so, it's so twitchy having that articulated body. Alright, there we go. So that's in the right position. Let's drop it down. Oh, no. Nope. Forks are angled. It's all going wrong. It's all going wrong. Ah! Alright, there we go. We're kind of squared up again. Let's straighten those forks out. Now let's try seeing if I can actually pick up two using one on each fork and then use the top piece to clamp down and keep them stable. We're in uncharted territory here. Never tried this before. Never used this tool before. If it works... I'll look like a genius. If it doesn't work, I'll look like a blithering idiot. Which is probably more likely. <laughs> it's the wrong size. Oh, no, I'm a blithering idiot. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Okay, well, on that, I think it's time to call it an episode. So, uh, we will... Uh, pick up dealing with our great demand in the next episode. Thanks for watching. I am Jim Bob and I will catch you back on Big Bud Farm very soon. <laughs>